In the last video, we produced a single step income statement, but in this video, we're going to produce the multiple step income statement in good form. As always, we start with the company name, the name of the statement, and the appropriate dating, which in this case would be year ended September 30th, 2020. In this case, we don't have a starting title called revenues. We simply start with sales revenue which we know was $1,496,792. None of the numbers are going to change. What we're going to change is how we put them together. We're going to deduct the sales returns and allowances because sales returns and allowances reduce the amount that is available with regards to revenue. Negative 28,824. We're going to take away sales discounts because sales discounts reduce the amount of revenue. 7,520. This will provide us with net sales. Net sales is always calculated as sales revenue minus sales returns and allowances minus sales discounts. That's never going to change. The total is 1,460,448. Notice I'm putting it in a new column. You don't have to do that. I'm just doing it for clarity. So at this point, we're going to not put in the interest revenue. The interest revenue is not part of the majority of the business that the company is involved in. Instead, I'm going to take cost of goods sold away from net sales. Remember, cost of goods sold is the only expense account that doesn't actually use the word expense. 1,115,028. If I take the difference between these two, I calculate gross profit. $345,420. Gross profit is the amount of profit available from the major source of income from the company, which in this case is selling products. Gross profit is an important indicator of the company's success. It's used to determine if the company has enough gross profit to cover all their operating expenses plus the profit that the company wants to have available to the shareholders. After gross profit, we deduct all the operating expenses. I'm going to start with salaries expense. 138,131. Depreciation expense, 26,312. Utilities expense, 17,797. Repair and maintenance, 12,280. Insurance expense, 9,600 and supplies expense, 6,289. Note what is missing here. I did not include the interest expense. That's because interest expense is a financing cost, not an operating expense. So it's put in a separate category. The operating expenses are focused on those expenses that are used or consumed to operate the business. The total operating expenses are then subtotaled $210,409. This determines the income from operations, which will be the gross profit minus the total operating expenses. That is $135,011. Moving on, we have an other category called other revenues and expenses. This is made up of things such as interest revenue, interest expense, gains on the sale of property, plant and equipment, losses on the sale of property, plant and equipment, and some other accounts. Right now, we've got interest revenue, 3920 and we've got interest expense, 14354 Notice that in one grouping, I've got revenue, which increases income, and an expense, which reduces income. And I've got them both put in there as a positive number, but I can't do that. I have to have one of them indicating that it's going in the opposite direction. So I'm going to put brackets around revenue. Does revenue reduce income? And the answer is no. But I choose to put brackets around the account that has the lowest amount because it's reducing the interest expense. And the total other revenues and expenses will be an expense. 10434 I'm going to put brackets around this to clearly indicate that it's going to reduce the income from operations. I now have income before income tax. 
the amount is 124,577. If you go back to the single step income statement, you will see immediately that this amount is the same. In fact, the next line is going to be income tax expense. Exactly the same as it was in the single step income statement, 25,177. The final line, net income, 99,400. Note that the multiple step income statement and the single step income statement result in the same ending income. We are using the exact same accounts that we used before. All we're doing is placing them in a different order. The amount at the bottom of the income statement is always carried forward to the statement of changes in equity. And that'll be the topic of my next video.